Namaste yogis. I'm Victoria. I'm excited to be here and to be able to share these online classes with you. And today we're going to explore the third and fourth chakras so that we're living from a place of courage and determination and also exploring how we can use that to continue to live from our heart and connect more to each other um, during these times where connection is so needed. So thank you for being here. Namaste. All right. You guys are ready? Mm -hmm. So Find a comfortable seat, and that can really, you can use your blocks, you can use anything that you need. And close your eyes, just let your palms of your hands rest on your knees for a second. And just land here and now on your mat. Feel your sit bones into the earth. And feel all the places that make contact with the earth. Your shins, your toes, your knees, your thighs. Let that be a moment to ground into this present moment. And just give yourself a moment of gratitude that you have arrived onto your mat for your practice. We'll take three breaths together. Inhale. Again, big breath in. And then one more best streak of breath. Inhale. And then start to seal the lips and begin to breathe in and out through the nose. Finding your ujjayi pranayama with that slight restriction in the back of the throat that allows you to hear your breath like a soft whisper, the dark Vader whisper that I'm always talking about. And let that be your point of dharana concentration today. And then as you allow the eyes to perhaps gently flutter open, inhale your arms up to the sky, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, reach your arms out to the height of your shoulders and really reach through the palms of the hands. And notice if you can feel as the palms reach away and the fingers reach towards you, a sense of almost electricity. Bring the shoulder blades slightly together as the belly pulls into the spine for support and feel the opening of the heart. The meridians of the heart and lungs run through the arms, so reach out in all directions. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, left arm swings under the right, eagle wrap the arms, Garudasana. Lift the elbows and tuck the chin and feel the back of your heart open as we explore both the back, the front, and even the sides of the heart today. As you inhale, reach your arms to the sky, grab opposite elbows, bringing the head between the heart. And then take a deep breath in here as the arm bones lengthen up towards the sky. As you exhale, release the arms, and then right arm reaches down to the ground, left arm reaches over for a side bend. Here we are opening up the side of the heart, the rib cage, the intercostals. Keep reaching down through the opposite hip. As you inhale, come back to center. Both arms lift to the sky, breathe in. As you exhale, reach the arms out, coming back to a mudra. As we reject the fear, we push it away. Breathing into the center of the heart as the lungs expand. And then on an exhale, this time it's right arm under the left. Lifting the elbows and tucking the chin. Feeling the back of the heart open, sending your ujjayi pranayama between the shoulder blades. Feel the slight extra constriction in the throat here, Jalahara Bandha. On the next breath in, reach your arms up and grab opposite elbows, finding the bind over the head. Continue to pull the legs of the spine for support here in a gentle back bend. On your next exhale, Hand comes down to the ground, reach the right arm over, sending the right hip towards the ground. A gentle gaze up as you breathe in. Gorgeous. Both arms up to the sky, take a deep breath in. This time as you exhale, come into a gentle forward fold, head comes towards the ground. Staying low, roll over your shins as you come onto your hands and knees and find a tabletop pose. Stack your hands, right underneath your shoulders, your knees under your hips. Pull the belly to the spine so that right away you're sparking that sense of fire in the belly. 
and then inhale, arch your spine, look up for cow pose, and then exhale, the chin to the chest, round the spine like a scared cat with your neck. Heart reaches through the arms as you breathe in, the eyes roll up and back, so the muscles of the eyes stretch here, and then as you exhale, the chin to the chest, let the gaze go towards the collarbones, stretching the eyes in the opposite direction. Heart opens on your inhale, the front of the heart expands forward. And then as you exhale, the back of the heart opens as it reaches up towards the sky. Take another round, make it a little bit more sensual, more intimate between you and your breath. And the feeling of your spine beginning to really open up. On your next breath in, find a nice neutral spine. And then tuck the toes and lift your hips for downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Perhaps it's your first down dog of the day, so just start to feel what you feel and pedal the feet out slowly using your Ujjayi Pranayama to take you from one side to the other. So perhaps it's inhale, exhale to the other side. Right? So the breath is moving you even in these small movements. Really beautiful breathing. And then go ahead and reach both heels back, but soften the knees to lift the hips high. The chest will come a little bit closer to the thighs, and then reach through the arms so that they become your second legs. Come high up on your tippy toes, roll forward into plank. That'll give you that nice measurement for your down dog. And then shift forward more and either lower the knees or lower the whole body in one piece as you ground the belly. Come up for a baby cobra as your heart peaks forward for your first little back bend here. Press down through the feet. And then as you exhale, bend the knees, tuck the toes, downward facing dog, hips high. Start to take the slowest walk to the front of the mat so that you're pressing down through the heels and even the walking forward becomes a meditation, something to observe. Rag bow at the top of the mat as you separate the feet, grab opposite elbows, let the head hang heavy, and let the knees soften. Think of chest to thighs this early in class. Worry about the legs straightening a little bit later when we warm up more. Release your head, shake it yes, shake it no. Right, it's almost like we can drop any thoughts that are unnecessary right now onto our mat. The opportunity for our practice to hold that space for us. As you gently release the arms, let them dangle. Imagine that there's no bones in the arms. And then put that energy into the belly, to the spine, so that there's a little bit more of the sit bones lifting up through the structure of the bones and not the joints locking out. Start to heel toe the feet in towards each other till the big toes touch. And then keeping the knees soft, start to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Head is last to erect. Once the head arrives, roll the shoulders up, back, and down, and let the palms of your hands face forward into Dasana, Mountain Pose. Really reach down through your fingers just like you're reaching down through your toes, and let the neck get long as the crown of the head reaches towards the sky. On an inhale, reach your arms over your head, Urdhva Hastasana. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart center and let your thumbs press into your chest and feel your beautiful heart beating. Three ohms, the mantra of manifestation. So call in your intention for your practice. Perhaps it's this feeling of being courageous to live from a more connected heart space at this time. And to continue to use our spiritual practice and our physical practice to bring us closer to ourselves and each other. Three ohms, inhale. any density in the physical and energetic body. 
On an inhale, reach your arms to the sky, take a deep breath in, look up at your intention. As you exhale, forward fold over your legs, emptying the breath out, softening the knees. Halfway lift as you inhale, bring the shoulder blades together. As you exhale, palm the mat. Right leg reaches back, inhale, look forward. Exhale, down dog, hips high. Roll forward into plank like a wave that arrives. Lower half or all the way, chaturanga or to the ground. Up dog or cobra, yogi's choice, what you're ready for. And then exhale, down dog, hips high. Inhale, your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, it forward between your hands. Inhale to look forward. Exhale to step forward, release the head. Rising up, arms lift overhead, big breath in, reach your intention high. As you exhale, forward fold, bow into your own heart. Halfway lift as you inhale, shoulder blades together. Exhale, palm the mat. Left leg reaches back, heart lifts, breathe in. Down dog, breath out. Rolling forward, inhale. Chaturanga or to the mat as you exhale. Up dog or cobra shines the heart forward. Exhale, down dog, hips high. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, it forward between your hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, release the head. Rising up, big breath in, reach up, look up, the eyes gaze, and then exhale, forward fold, and be out. Right away, right leg reaches back. Heart lifts to breathe in. Down dog, breath out. Roll forward, inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, or the back bend of your choice. Exhale, down dog, hips high. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, it forward between your hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, release the head. Rising up, big breath in, reach up and look up. As you exhale, release the back. Left leg reaches back. Look forward, breathe in. Down dog, breath out. Rolling forward, there's a wave in the spine here. Chaturanga, inhale for up dog. Exhale, down dog, hips high. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Exhale, it forward between your hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, release the head. Rise up, big breath in. Let's pause here at the top. Feet together, open the arms wide like you're ready to receive your intention. Sit down, Utkatasana, chair pose. Pull the belly to the spine. And really feel the fire that you build here in the legs, right? There's a sense of determination and courage that comes from Utkatasana, which actually translates into powerful pose. So see if you can feel your power and sit into it even a little bit deeper. And then pull the belly to the spine and decide to sit even lower, even though your legs are burning, right? Just a reminder that you're so, you're so alive. Sit a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. Smile, it makes it everything easier. And then as you inhale, rise up and reach up and back with slight back bend, bowing to each other's strength. As you exhale, forward fold and empty the breath. Halfway lift as you inhale, palming the mat as you exhale. Right leg reaches back. Plank into chaturanga as one exhale here. Up dog, breathe in, collarbones spread apart. And then exhale, down dog, hips high. Inhale, right leg high. Warrior one as we step forward, both arms lift to the sky, breathe in. Hips are neutral, the gaze is high, but the chin can stay parallel to the ground so the back of the neck stays nice and long. On your next breath out, circle your hands to the ground. Step back, plank pose to breathe in. Chaturanga is a slow sipping of the breath out. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale completely. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Warrior one as you step lightly. Spin the back heel down, reach the arms up and energize the fingertips. There's a slight back bend that comes from the back leg, so really reach the back heel down to the ground and then notice the connection between the back heel and the front of the heart being able to reach forward more. On your next exhale, hands come to the ground. Plank pose to breathe in. Chaturanga the breath out. Up dog, long neck, just the eyes roll up. And then exhale, down dog, hips high. Breathing in, breathing out. Bend the knees, look forward, half step or fold to the front of the mat. As you inhale, look forward. As you exhale, forward fold. Rising up, big breath in, Urdhva Hastasana. Sitting down, Utkatasana, chair pose. Pull the belly to the spine. 
On your next exhale, forward fold over your leg and deep a breath. Halfway lift as you inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Left leg reaches back. Plank chaturanga is an exhale. Up dog is a beautiful brand new breath in. Down dog, empty it all out. Inhale, right leg high. Warrior one as you step forward, both arms lift to the sky. Big, beautiful breath in. On an exhale, hands come to the ground. Take it away, the vinyasa is yours, and I'll meet you in downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Warrior one, your Vindasana one as you step forward, the proud warrior, heart forward. As you exhale, hands come to the ground, vinyasa with a mindful breath and movement. Heart lifts up, shoulder breath spread, as you exhale, down the facing dog, hips high. Bend the knees, look forward, half step or float, front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Urdha Vasasana, high prayer, stretch the body and the lungs, sit down, Uttakasana, chair pulls, belly to spine. Deepen the breath and the commitment here to the fire that lives inside of us. On an exhale, forward fold, empty the breath, halfway lift to breathe in. Palm the mat, chaturanga, hopper step back. Up dog, breathe in. Gorgeous. Down dog, and feed the breath. Close your eyes and just feel the sun salutations moving through your body. The asana is like medicine for us. Right? So see if you can feel where you feel the most prana. Maybe it's the legs, it can be the arms, the belly, the chest. It'll be different for everyone. Right? But these movements were designed thousands of years ago to really energize our physical and energetic body in all the ways. Let's use that energy to flow. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, cheetah, the knee to the nose, the shoulders over the wrists. Inhale, back, three point. Twist the cheetah, tap your upper left arm, and then pause here. Move to the left and let your drishti take you further. Inhale, back, three point. Step it forward, warrior one, Virabhadrasana one, with the hips even. Take a deep breath in. Left arm under the right, eagle wrap the arms, lift the elbows, tuck the chin, breathe into the back of the heart. As you inhale, lift your arms to the sky, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, hands come down to the ground. Step back, plank pose, vinyasa is yours, on the in down dog. Always the opportunity to spend more time in down dog if you skip your vinyasa. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, cheetah, right to your heart center. Inhale, three point. Twist the cheetah and look over to the right. Inhale, three point. Step it forward, rear the Vrasana one, both arms to the sky, take a deep breath in. Hips are even as best as you can. Right arm under the left, eagle wrap the arms, lift the elbows, tuck the chin. Again, opportunity to really breathe into the back body, even the kidney space. On an inhale, lift the arms to the sky, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, hands to the ground. Vinyasa is yours, meet you in down dog. Mindful in breath and body here during the vinyasa. Let's add on and build this together. Inhale, right leg high. Twist the chi up, falling triangle as you extend the leg, the left arm lifts to the sky, take a deep breath in. On an exhale, use your guts to take you back into three point, right leg high. Step it forward, warrior one, as the back heel spins down. Once you find your feet, left arm under the right, eagle wrap the arms. Lift the elbows, tuck the chin. Engage the core, pull it up towards the heart to lift the back heel off of the mat, coming into your crescent lunge, which eagle arms. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a springing forward into warrior three through the back leg as you lean forward. Reach your arms forward and your heel back. See if you can slowly land back into your crescent lunge. When you do, warrior two, open up your eagle arms and back heel presses down to the earth. Up and back, it's peaceful warrior. Take a deep breath in. Stay here and straighten the right leg as you lean back. Exhale slowly into triangle pose, Kutita Trikonasana. Right hand comes to your shin, left arm to the sky. Look 
up and past the left fingertips, and then notice where your head is in space, and lean the head back over the right toes, so there's a slight leaning back. The knee is soft, so you're never locking out the joint. Think of the quad lifting up to support the straight leg. Breathing in. Rebend the knee and tip it back, peaceful warrior. Big breath in. Parallel your feet, take star pose to the center. A moment to center the body and the breath. As you exhale, spin on the heels, warrior two to the back of the house for your perspective. Up and back is peaceful warrior, breathe in. Supported side angle on the breath out, elbow to the thigh, opposite arm reaches over the head. Use the elbow into the thigh so it's not just hanging out. The job of that, of that connection is to use it to spin the heart up towards the sky. Revolve your rib cage around your gorgeous heart. On your next breath in, peaceful warrior. Keep the same bend in the front knee. Rainbow warrior as you sweep the energy across your mat. Rainbow takes you to the front of the house, right into a half moon. Right hand comes to the block or to the ground. You can get creative at home with what, how you use your blocks. It can be a book, it can be a water bottle. Look up and pass your left fingertips and really flex through the left toes. Slowly land back in Peaceful Warrior, bending into the front knee to get there. Cartwheel the hands down, left hand down, side plank. Stack your right foot on top of your left. And then lift your hips high to the sky as you take the arm over the head. Rainbow the rib cage all the way up to the sky. Take the top leg, lift it high. Lift it a little higher, step it behind you, wild thing. You guys know I call this rock star, breathe in. Three-legged dog, right leg high to the sky. Take your vinyasa, your setup for the three-legged one if you want it, and I'll meet you in down dog. Yeah, or absolutely a handstand hop with that spirit dive. Beautiful. Louise is our frequent flyer here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, breathing in. Right, down dog is that time to resettle back into your ujjayi pranayama, to forgive yourself right away for that, that you might have lost it. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Twist the cheetah fallen triangle, extend the leg and lift the right arm to the sky. Take a deep breath in, it's like you're twisting yourself inside out. Back to three point, high to the sky it goes, feel how your abs make that happen. Warrior one, as you step lightly, arms lift up towards the sky. This time it's the right arm under the left, eagle wrap, garudasana. Lift the elbows, tuck the chin. Good, feel your feet grounded. Right, strength through your core as you lift the back heel off of the mat coming into your crescent lunge. Taking you, that's right, Jane, into warrior three. Go for it. <laughs> Notice how the body just begins to know what's next. Reach your arms forward and your heel back and feel the stretch of the opposition. Slow as you can, land back into your crescent lunge. Free the arms for warrior two as you spin the back heel down. Up and back, it's peaceful warrior. Take a deep breath in. Lean back and straighten the front leg. Triangle pose. Sita so Trikonasana, breath out. Really take your time to come into the pose. Just like Louise, you can always adjust the stance and make it a little bit shorter for Sita Trikonasana, especially if you feel slightly unbalanced. And then pull the belly to the spine, lean back, and again, think of the front knee not locking out, but the quad doing the work. Notice how you can take a deeper breath when the arms are reached out in both directions like this. On your next inhale, re-bend the knee, peaceful warrior, as you reach up and back. Parallel the feet, start pulsating you through the center, look up at your intention. Exhale, warrior two to the back of the house. Up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Supported side angle, breath out. This time it's the left arm that reaches over the head, maybe the pinky finger on the left hand turns in towards you, that's it. And then think of also the knee staying right over the middle of the toe, so the inner thigh is opening up. It's quite the fiery pose, so think of the pelvic floor lifting to support you from the inside out. Up and back, it's peaceful warrior, take a deep breath in. Rainbow sweeps the energy clean across the mat. Flip the heels and rainbow takes you to the front. Stay low to the ground for half moon. So like a little ninja, you move right into your Arjunasana. 
left hand comes to the ground with a block or even floats. See if you can gaze up, Louise. Even if you fall out, it does not matter. Right? Give yourself the opportunity to grow your practice. Slowly tip it back, peaceful warrior. Really nice. Cartwheel your hands down. Right hand down, Vashisthasana, side plank. Lift right away from the heels so that you can feel the obliques kick in to help. Take the arm over the head. Rainbow the ribcage to the sky. Lift the leg high to the sky. Lift it higher. Step it behind you, rock star. Breathe in. Three-legged dog, take it away. It's yours. And I'll meet you in downward facing dog. All right, so vinyasa is an opportunity for play, right, or something that you're working on. Or you skip it all together and we always be in down dog. It's all beautiful, right? It's your practice. Breathe in. Breathe out. So we'll start similar and change it up in the, at the end a little bit to add on. Inhale, right leg high. Twist the cheetah, grab the foot for the arm balance and reach it towards the front of your mat. Mm -hmm. You can always come into fallen triangle, breathe in. That's it, Jane. Three-legged dog, high to the sky goes. Step it forward, right into crescent lunge. Keeping the back heel lifted. Left arm under the right, Garandasana of the arms. Warrior three, as the heart reaches forward, the heel reaches back in opposition. Slowly land back in your crescent lunge, breathe in. Open up, warrior two, breath out. Up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Triangle pose with a half bind on the breath out. The trick to a bind is to keep the elbow close to the body so that it never feels like it's getting pulled out, but instead, the elbow is coming in and integrating the shoulder back into its socket. Then you can use the entire forearm to lean back and into. Keeping the half bind is peaceful warrior with the half bind, breathe in. Parallel the feet, star pose releases the arms to the sky. On an exhale, warrior two takes you to the back of the house. Up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Extended side angle on the breath out. Opportunity to stay with supported, opportunity to go into a full bind if you desire a little bit more of that shoulder opening today. I definitely have this love-hate relationship with binding. I love it one day and I hate it the next. So you just explore and see where you're at today, right? Some days it feels so good and some days I literally feel like a prisoner in them, right? It is fun though to explore where the mind goes and how the body feels in support of those thoughts. Up and back, peaceful warriors, you let it go. Rainbow, sweep it across, let it be a dance. Rainbow takes you to the front, right into your half moon. Push off. Mm -hmm. Good, we're gonna take it into Ardhachapasana, so bend the left knee and grab the left foot or ankle with the left hand, and then find the kicking back to be support for the balance. So the more that you kick back, the sturdier and more stable the pose becomes. Slowly tip back into Peaceful Warrior, landing lightly. Rainbow Warrior, again, sweep across. Right into Cosmic Curtsy, left foot behind the right, bowing to your efforts, the top of the mat. Rising with the left foot into your hand, coming into Tree Pose, Rikshasana. Lift the arms to the sky. As the foot presses into the thigh, the thigh presses into the foot, you find the balance. Beautiful. Perhaps the arms outreach or they can stay at the heart center, your least choice here. And then float the tree off of your thigh to keep the external rotation of the hip. And then grab yogi toe lock or your knee and extend out for Utita Asta Paragustasana, straight out to the left side of the room. Reach your right arm in opposition and use the right arm to leverage the left heel to lift. Bringing the knee or the leg forward into Utita A, big toe hold A, keep the foot lifted and reach both arms to the sky. Levitating the foot, right? Use your willpower, the third chakra, to lift the toes just a little bit higher. Bend the knee, stroke pose. Both feet to the ground, Utkatasana. Oh, Utkatasana actually feels good here. <laughs> <laughs> after, after being on one foot for a while. 
High up on your tippy toes, diver's pose. Reach your heart forward and lean the arms back. Legs are straight, so it's just like a little bit different than skiers. Think of your chest being parallel to the ground. Hands to the ground, crow pose. Keep the heels and the butt lifted. Chaturanga the arms back. And then lean forward and look forward. We won't hop back. Three breaths here. Right, so find your ujjayi breath, right? Even in the more difficult balance we pose. After your three breaths, land at the top of the mat, forward fold, release your head, feel the back of the legs broken up. Halfway lift to breathe in, palm the mat, breath out. Right leg reaches back, pause here. Right, really land the back foot and feel the power of the right leg pressing into the earth. Grab yogi toe lock on your left big toe. Right, trust me a little bit, but trust yourselves a lot. Ekapada Vashisasana, one-legged side plank. Even if you hold your foot for one second, you've grown your practice. The leg extends up or the knee extends up, and then step it behind you, that's it, Jane, right into your rock star. Breathe in. Almost done. Three-legged dog, left leg high to the sky. Mountain climber, arm balance, or prep. So opportunity here to take your vinyasa into another arm balance to take the vinyasa, or to meet me in down dog. That's it, Jane, yes, Louise, beautiful. And then back to your down dog, this is where we'll meet to catch our breath. Really connect to your heartbeat, right? Notice how your heart is beating a little bit bigger. There's more prana there at the heart center, right, the anahata chakra. So really allow yourself to feel that, to be in that pulsation. Let's even things out. Inhale, left leg high. Twist the chida, grab the foot for the arm balance, or fall in triangle. Yogi's choice. Breathe in. Heart opens. Back to three point, high where the sky goes. Take your time to do it with control. Step it forward, crescent lunge. The back heel stays lifted right away. Right arm reaches under the left, eagle wrap, garland off the arms. Good charge with the back heel for warrior three as we move forward. Keep reaching back through the heel. Slow as you can, we land into your crescent lunge and open up warrior two as you exhale. Notice how the heart opens. Up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Straighten the front leg, triangle pose on the breath out. This is the side where we'll take the half bind again to stay even. All right, and just explore the movement of your elbow. As it moves away from you, it feels like the shoulder is getting pulled out of its girdle. As it moves closer to you, you get to integrate the shoulder closer and then use the forearm to lean the whole torso back. Breathe. Half down, peaceful warrior, your next breath in. Parallel the feet, take it through star. On an exhale, warrior two, the back of the house. Up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Extended side angle on the breath out. Explore the same bind that you took on the other side so that you stay nice and even. And then notice that one side perhaps feels different than the other and so much compassion for yourself, right? Often that just means that we need to spend more time or give more love to one side. The love comes in through a deeper breath, through the pelvic floor lifting to support you. Release the bind, peaceful warrior. It feels like freedom, breathe in. Rainbow warriors, you sweep the energy again across the mat. Rainbow takes you to the front, make it dance, right into your half moon to set up for Ardha Chapasana. Right, so find the balance in half moon first. Feel really steady here. Then bend the right knee and grab the right foot with the right ankle. Gorgeous, Louise. And then kick back as the heart open. Eventually the gaze is high to the sky. Drishti is the cherry on top of every asana. Right? It directs our energy beyond our physical body. Slow as you can, release the leg with control. Land back in your peaceful warrior as you breathe in. Rainbow is a breath out. Cross the mat. Right into cosmic curtsy. Right foot behind the left with the top of the mat. Bow into your effort. Rising with the right foot in your hand for tree pose. Tree can be to your thigh or to the calf, just not the knee. Right, the knee doesn't like to move in that position or in that direction. 
And then left knee a little bit further to the left. Really think of the external rotation here. And then arms lift. Close the front of the rib cage so all the prana stays inside of the body. Good, feel steady through the left big toe. And float the right foot off of your thigh. Grab the foot or the knee for our Uttita Asta Paragustasana B. So we'll reach it out to the right as the left arm counterbalances to the left. Beautiful, slowly bring the knee or like forward, Tita A, and then we'll float the foot and lift the arms to the sky. Right, the sense of determination comes in here. Stork pose, exhale, Utkatasana chair, sit up, pull the belly to the spine. Right, notice how your feet land, your breath lands. Dyer's pose, straighten the legs, come high up on the tippy toes. Imagine yourself diving deep into the cosmic pool that you are. Hands to the ground, crow or crane. Right, so you might start with crow with the elbows bent, and then start to work even one centimeter of straightening the arms to come into crane. Right, it's a difficult posture, but it's fun to play. Especially if you're at home and you put a blanket or a bolster or something in front of you to give you just a little bit more courage. Breathe. Gorgeous, everyone. One more breath, and at the top of the mat, forward fold over your legs, release your breath. Inhale, halfway lift and lengthen. As you exhale, bow in. Left leg reaches back. Pause here for the breath in. Good. Feel the strength of the back leg as you gradually toe lock on the right big toe. Ekapadavashi Sasana on this side, one sided. One-legged side plank, lift, yes, yes, yes. Step behind, rock star is waiting for you, perfect. Three-legged dog, right leg high to the sky. Mountain climber, arm balance or prep. A handstand, anything that you want in here, the yes is yours. As yogis, we always have options. And then I'll meet you in down dog for mm -hmm. the breath out. Breathe in, ah, and breathe mm -hmm. out. Be in that feeling. Okay. Changing it up a little bit. Inhale, right leg high. Step it forward. Lower the back knee, Anjane Asana. Maybe keep the back toes tucked under. And then left arm under the right, eagle wrap the arms. Okay. Good. Really working the back of the body opening. Take a deep breath in and lean up and back for the back bend here. On an exhale, bring the shoulders back over the hips, and then reach forward to twist, keeping the bind with the arms to the outside of the right knee. And then use the back shin and even the back foot to really press down and energetically squeeze your inner thighs towards each other and even the hips magnetize, breathe in. Open the arms for yourself, look back at the right arm, breathe in. Maybe you can even work the left armpit to the outside of the left knee now that the arms are free. Take both hands on either side of the front foot. Tuck the back toes under if they're not already. Standing split as you push gently off of the back foot. Let your head reach down and towards your right knee. Keep looking back at your right toes so that they're pointing down, uh, left toes, and squeeze your inner thighs towards each other to keep the hips even. Kundalini, left knee behind the right. Keep the left hand down, reach your right arm to the sky, and twist it open. Take a deep breath in. Feel how the heart and lungs open when the arms spread away from each other. Beautiful. Bring both hands down by the front foot, and then lower yourself down into the seated spinal twist, right? And in seated spinal twist, what you want to check for is that the right hip is not lifting up, but that it's down. If it is lifting and you can't lower it, extend the left leg out and in front of you. So it's really important to just twist from a place of safety. Take your right hand behind you, lift your left arm to the sky, and then as you exhale, left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Really feel that connection there. And then you guys stay there for a couple of more breaths, and I'm just going to do a little demo here of where we're going next. 
So we're gonna take it into a side crow with eagle legs, right? Because we have the position of the legs already in the twist. What I find about side crow is that the hardest part of it is the twisting. And we really got it here because we have the sit bones on the ground. So we really have the place to ground into our twist. So from here, the bottom foot will step down to lift the glutes up. I'll spin to the back of the mat and chaturanga the arms and lean forward. I already have the leaf eagle legs, but I'll spread the toes to find a lightness. And then I'll press the feet back down to the earth and land like nothing ever happened. Yeah? So you guys try that. All right, so you have the twist. <laughs> Right? There's only trying or not trying, right? There's not, it's not about getting it, it's just about exploring. That's it, Louise. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then land. Good. Smile for the camera, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and then go counter twist to the opposite side. Let the forehead touch the ground in a moment of devotion. Come back to the center, reach your feet forward, hands behind you, altar pose. Right, open up the hip creases and become the altar of your own practice, of your devotion. Open up your mouth to guide your tongue, lion's breath. <sighs> Lower the hips, cross the shins. Hop or step back, vinyasa is yours if you want it, and I'll meet you in down dog. Hmm. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, not like I the sky. Step it forward between your hands. Lower the back knee. Lift your arms to the sky. Take a deep breath in. Anjani Asana. Raise this pose of gratitude. And then, yep, right arm under the left. Eagle wrap the arms. Lift the elbows. Tuck the chin. Find the back bend here. Right? Anjani Asana is a back bend position. Mm -hmm. And then keeping the eagle wrap, you'll twist now to the left. Right. Secure the hips reaching towards each other, the inner thighs energetically reaching towards each other. So you want the lower back to stay nice and stable, and we're really twisting from the rib cage, shoulder, head, right, to the upper torso. Breathe in. Breathe out. Gently release the arms and see if you can work the armpit to the outside of the knee, going even deeper, as twists are detoxifying and heating for the body. It's really, really beautiful poses here. So good for our health to be in twisted positions. Breathe in. On your next exhale, there's no rush. Both hands come down on either side of the front foot. Tuck the back toes under, standing split. There is an opportunity here now to go either into ultimate balance, which is both hands to the ankle, or find a couple of handstand hops. So you want to catch some air here and play, you can, if you're at home and you want to move towards the wall, you can pause and move it towards the wall for a couple of handstand hops. That's it, beautiful. And then you'll land back into your standing split. Good, take a breath there, land your breath as you land your feet. And then Kundalini, right knee behind the left. Right hand stays down, find the twist, open up. A deep breath in, feel the spreading energetically of the heart opening, the Fingertips come alive, right? They're the very edges of the heart space. And then as both hands come down to the ground, stay in the twist and lower all the way down to Ardha Matsya and Drasana. Seated spinal twist. Good, left hand behind you. Again, find those sit bones even to the earth. Left hand behind you, right arm to the sky, and then right elbow to the outside of the left knee. On the inhale, find length, right? To really lift up. And then on the exhale, find a little bit more twist. Inhale, lengthen. Even the neck, even the chin is right over the heart. And then the exhale, that opportunity to find more of the twist. Good, we'll do one more breath before we try the arm balance on this side. And then when you're ready, press down through the bottom foot, spin to the back of the house, try to run with the arms, Try to keep that connection of the elbow to the knee. Mm -hmm. And then lean forward, right through the toes, right through the legs. Yes, Jane, Louise, and everybody at home. 
I celebrate you all, <laughs> then sit down. <laughs> Counter twist to the opposite side, bow to your own efforts. Good. Feet come out in front of you, hands behind you, alter pose. Lift the hips as high as the shoulder. We'll stay here and step the right foot forward and then the left as we come into reverse plank. Really feel the opening of the shoulders and the heart as you breathe in. And then on an exhale, slide your butt all the way back towards your hands coming into Dandasana. Maybe you float up for a moment. Breathe in. As you exhale, lower. Mm. Bend the knees. Hot blast. Vinyasa, if you want it, I'll meet you in down dog. Hop a step back. It's all yours. <sighs> down dog. Right? Feel the energy that you have created in your practice thus far. High up on your tippy toes, roll forward plank pose. We're going to lower to the count of eight. So really slow and controlled to the belly. Eight. Elbows point straight back. Seven. Hovering six, feeling your power five, four, the legs get stronger, three, you're resisting gravity, two and a half, just <laughs> kidding, one, release. <laughs> Make a little pillow for your forehead, elbows reach out to the sides, and just have a moment where you're just happy that you're on the ground, this feels so nice, breathe in. As you can tell, I love rigorous practice, but I love to bring it down afterwards. So feel the belly and the heart and how you can feel it pumping against the earth. And what does that feel like? See if you can feel the energy moving all the way down into your tips of your toes and the edges of your fingertips. And then swim the arms behind you, either interlace them or keep them free by your sides. Engage the belly, like light a fire in the belly that presses the abs into the earth, and then use that to lift everything up for Shalabhasana, Lotus Pose. We really reach through the crown of the head, reaching forward and the toes reaching back. Lift to your highest point as you inhale, and then as you exhale, gently release and shimmy the hips from side to side to side, letting go of any extra prana in the lower back. Forehead comes to the mat to prepare. Again, take the arms behind you, either interlace them or keep them free. If you interlace them, opposite thumb on top. Good, light the fire in the belly and on an inhale, rise. See, breathing bigger helps you to have more height. And then physically think of more length and height. So you're reaching away the head from the feet, the feet away from the head, getting longer. Lift your highest point as you breathe in. And then on the exhale, release completely, shimmy, shimmy. Let go of those hips. Good. Forehead comes back down to the mat to prepare. Bend the knees. Grab the ankles instead of the toes today. Mm -hmm. At home, bring the knees a little bit closer to each other. They don't have to touch, but they shouldn't be far out and splayed out. So the lower back stays open. Now flex the feet and then kick your ankles into your hands as you rise through the strength of your legs. And then breathe so big that you lift the chest with the breath in because the belly fills. And then breathe out so much that you lean forward a little bit, finding a little bit of a rocking sensation here in your Dhanurasana, bow pose. Lift to your highest point as you breathe in. Release, but keep the knees bent on the breath out. Rinse your wiper the knees back and forth. Good, bring prana and energy into your lower back as it was just really strengthened in that pose, so just releasing energetically. Gorgeous. And then sliding the hands right by your rib cage like you just came out of Chaturanga, knees together, child's pose. So knees together to help open up the lower back. All right, so we're just counterposing here the back bending that we've done. Let the head relax and check in to your practice, check into your breath, come back to that Ujjayi Pranayama, right? Notice the fruits of your practice, right? Notice the energy and where it lies now, the belly, perhaps the heart. Notice the little beads of sweat coming down the sides of your face and expression of prana. You made that. 
And then pull the belly to the spine and staying here in your child's pose, access the breath to the kidney space, right? The kidneys energetically hold our fears. So as the belly pulls in, see if you have more access to send the breath into the kidney space and even the back lobes of the lungs. And then keeping that breath there, start to walk the hands towards the knees until you're sitting up on your shins. Take your hips to the right, like a little mermaid, merman, and then swing the legs out in front of you and give them just like a little easy shake out there. Good. And then take your feet as wide as the mat, so like a small V shape, and we'll take the left foot into the right thigh, setting up for Johnny Shirsasana. Hands come behind the back, they sit us up nice and tall, and then energetically, just a gentle twist towards the right leg. Good, flex the right foot, line up your heart with your right big toe, lift your arms to the sky as you breathe in. Instead of reaching down, think of reaching forward, moving from your hip crease. Once your hands land, my gift to you is let go of your foot, retract the arms back, releasing the shoulders, and then really work the belly to the thigh. Right, once you have the belly to the thigh connection, you can use your exhale, emptying it out completely, to get the chest towards the knee, and then eventually the head to the shin. Right, no need to push yourself into that. Just know that those is where you're going. Hmm. I find forward folds to be so interesting compared to the other shapes in yoga because most of the shapes ask for strength, stability, and engagement. And the forward folds ask for that a little bit, but they also ask for surrender. They ask for us to let go. Because if we muscle through the forward fold, we can hurt ourselves, right? We can definitely muscle through our crescent lunge and even our crow pose. But here we have to soften in. Allow your breath to become deeper and more profound and more intimate. And then on your next breath in, start to walk the hands up the leg like you're giving your legs some love, a little massage on the way up until you feel the spine completely long and erect. Left hand to the outside of the left hip with the fingers pointing away. Stargazer pose as the right arm reaches up and over, taking us into a counter pose. And then as you exhale, gently land back into the same shape you just came out of. When you're ready, a simple switch of legs. Bringing the right foot in and extending the left leg out. Hands behind you to sit up tall and then turn the body towards the left leg. Right, notice the left pinky toe. Right? This is like nuance here, but see if you can line it up with your big toe so that you're stretching the calf in evenly in both directions. Lift your arms to the sky, breathe in, and then reaching forward, forward, forward instead of down. Good, I like to retract the hands back to soften the shoulders. It's hard to expect one part of the body to relax if the shoulders or the jaw or even behind the eyes are tense. And then again, work the connection of belly to thigh first, then chest to knee, and then perhaps forehead to shin or knee. Give yourself the opportunity to explore your exhale during this part of the practice, so that the more that you exhale and empty the belly past your regular point of exhalation, so there's nothing left, the more room that you give for the heart to move forward. So really moving from a place of breath and not brawn here. And then if you haven't already, release the head and let it be an anchor, deepen. Deepening in towards the pose and towards your breath. Next breath, come in with a little bit more sensuality, a little bit more exploring what it feels like inside of your body in this shape. 
and then start to slowly walk the hands up the leg, giving yourself that little massage, that little bit of love. Sitting up nice and tall. Hmm. It's quite blissful to come out of poses, no? Mm -hmm. And then right hand to the outside of the right hip. Start to sit. Breathe in. Reach up and away. As you exhale, gently fold back in to the same shape. Beautiful yogi. Extend your legs out and in front of you. Remove gently the flesh away from the sit bones. That's just so the sit bones can ground. That's the only reason you do that. Allow yourself to soften your knees to lay a little bit in your Paschimottanasana. We'll take a slightly restorative Paschimo. Lift your arms to the sky, right? Really lengthen up. And then as you exhale, again, reaching forward, 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 forward. Then I take the hands underneath the ankles. And then I pull gently the calves towards me as I straighten the knees just a little bit and press them into my hands. Right, keep that nice connection of belly to thigh so you can bend the knees as much as you need to make that happen. And then keep reaching forward as the hips reach back and then finally the head will drop between the shins, the knees, or onto blocks. Louise has a great variation there with blocks. Right, props are our friends. Allow them to be a resource of alignment and a bet for your practice. Give yourself the opportunity here to reflect and look inward towards yourself as there's literally nowhere else to look in this forward fold. And then start to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Take your time. Enjoy the coming out of the pose. Feel your spine lengthening. Feel the crown of the head reaching up towards the sky. And then gently lay back into Shavasana. And if you're home, you might enjoy a 15 minute Shavasana. It's quite lovely to give yourself that extra time in Shavasana, as it is the most important pose of yoga. It's not a pose to fall asleep in, <laughs> although that may happen and that's okay, but it's a pose that allows us to be completely relaxed yet totally aware. It's the pose that allows us to let go of all of the labels that we put on ourselves, to let go of all of the doing, and to just be. And that can be quite difficult. BKSI Anger describes it as the hardest pose in yoga. Allow yourself to move deeply into your Shavasana. Allow the body to be scanned by the breath for any leftover tension. Releasing the feet, unclenching your glutes. And together we'll take a deep breath right between the shoulder blades. Sip in more breath through the mouth, hold the breath in. And then as you exhale, release the shoulders across the mat. On your next breath in, feel your neck lengthen. And on your breath out, let your head relax. The work is done, yogis. Breathe into your beautiful life. Namaste.